Hello, hello, and welcome to Business of Design, episode 262, and I've got such a treat for you, a wonderful interior design professional, Heather Ferreras Token, and she is going to talk to us about how she slayed it with a recent client asking for a flat fee she never dreamed she could ask for, and she's going to tell us a little about her superpower, which is communicating with clients, putting herself in the client's shoes, becoming empathetic, and she actually has a method that she uses to improve her communication skills, and she's going to share that with us as well. When you listen to the episode, you're going to hear a couple things. Number one, it's really early in the morning for me, and I'm just not quite there. So please forgive me, ignore me, pay close attention to everything Heather says because it's gold. And then at the end of the episode, you're actually going to hear Heather's husband, who is a contractor. And I have big feelings about people who marry contractors and go into interior design. I think they're so lucky. I have bugged my husband so many times. He would be such a great contractor, an amazing contractor, but he has his own business and he's not budging. He loves it. And I never could convince him. So anyway, I'm sure there's a downside to working with your spouse or partner every single day, but the upsides must be pretty good too. But anyway, at the end of the episode, Heather's husband comes in and I'm saying hello to him. So you'll get to hear him as well. Let me tell you about Heather Ferreras Token. She was born and raised in Queens, New York, and we have a fun conversation about her accent. By the way, you should definitely check her out, Heather at tokenconstruction.com. On Instagram, it's Token Construction, and go to the show notes. You'll see the links to find Heather there. As I said, Heather was born and raised in Queens, but she grew up studying dance. And I asked her about that. I asked her how someone who got a scholarship to the Elliott Feld Ballet Theater, who studied at Dance Theater of Harlem, Alvin Eiley and Broadway Dance Center, who attended a performing arts high school, LaGuardia High School. How does somebody like that find herself in interior design? And you'll hear her answer that question in the episode. A bit of a heads up, there's an audio issue that happens, a little bit of a buzz and a hum sometimes. We did our best to clean that up, but you might hear it from time to time. I hope it isn't too annoying. It's worth listening to the episode because I love a story where someone starts out with so much raw talent and skill and there's something holding them back and they just bust through. And that is the story of Heather. We're so lucky because we get to hear that story a lot at Business of Design. You guys inspire us, sharing your message, sharing your success, sharing your struggles, help so many other people. We get so many emails saying thank you for the generosity of the people who share on this podcast. So if you haven't been on the podcast yet, if you're a Business of Design member, come on, we need you, we want you. Now, normally at this time in the episode, I would introduce Cheryl Horn, but life happens and Cheryl has to take care of her mom today. Everything is okay. I think she's broken her arm and Cheryl, of course, is a loving and devoted daughter on top of being a very busy mom. I don't know how she's going to fit in everything she needs to do in the next little while. We're all sending her big hugs. I hope she feels the good vibrations. Anyway, I'm going to do my best with announcements. What's coming up at Business of Design? Well, I know what I'm working on. I'm working on content for Business of Design Elite Retreat Santa Monica. Among other things, a round table with some of my A-team talking about how we work in unison, how we take care of each other, what standards we set for each other. I think I think I may also be doing a live read-through of a presentation. A couple years ago, the group asked me if I would read my contract line by line, and that seemed to be helpful. So this time, I think I'll be doing a presentation. I have one two days from now, quite a big one, and I think I will just repeat it. This will, my client meeting will be a rehearsal for the retreat. So I think I'm looking forward to that. You know, mostly I'm looking forward to those deep connections that get made and the aha moments and the breakthroughs and the tears, you know, sometimes the tears of, oh my gosh, I've been holding myself back and now I'm ready. So if you haven't signed up for the retreat yet, I really hope you will. I really, truly hope you will. If the retreat isn't in the cards for you this year, that's okay. Membership is exceedingly affordable. We keep it that way on purpose. 
I want to transform the industry one designer at a time. That's my mission. I've been on that mission since 2004, and we have made progress. I'm not saying it's exclusively because of the work we do at Business of Design, but I do know we've had a big part in changing the industry, a very big part in changing the industry. You guys make us look good every day, so thank you. Consider membership if you haven't yet joined. We need you. We want you. We have a lot of good work to do like maintaining this podcast. Membership pays for this podcast. So thank you so much for that. Other than that, you know what? It's time if you've been thinking, hey, business of design has changed my life and I'm ready now to go to the next level. Consider applying for boss level membership. We already have several people in the group who've been approved, more on the waiting list. We do the approvals once a week. So once you submit your application, you won't have to wait long to hear from us. Uh, Some people are immediately submitted or admitted because we know them. We know that they have implemented much of what they've learned and they're on a great path. Other people are brand new and haven't yet done the complete BOD 15 steps. And for those people, we encourage them, we gently nudge them toward completing that information, which is a 20-hour program. So it's not a huge commitment. And then we reconsider their application. So If you want to work with a team of highly motivated interior design professionals who have vision and a goal and a CFO to advise them, you should definitely apply to become a BOD boss. We would love to have you. That's it. Cheryl, we're sending you big hugs wherever you are, and I'm sure we will hear from her next week. And now into the episode, Business of Design, episode 262, How to Read Your Clients with Heather Ferreras Token. I am so glad you are here. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Selden. Business of Design is the world's best business trainer for interior design professionals like you. We have the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to consistently satisfy clients, increase profitability, and run your projects like a boss. Unlike traditional coaching, BOD is a fast track to immediate results. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to hundreds of targeted training modules, plus member perks like BOD Live events, member-only podcasts, preferred pricing, and the support of an engaged community of peers. We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. Okay, I'm going to kick things off because I know you've got a busy life. Hey, Heather, so good to see you. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you as well. Oh my gosh. Show me what you're drinking there. A it, large. It's Hot early latte. in the morning. Duncan. We run on Duncans, oh. right? <laughs> I run on Duncan about four to six times a day. Do you have one I super close to the house? I do. And then I have an amazing husband who brings me Duncan every time he passes by the house. Oh my gosh. Do not talk to us about your amazing husband. Everybody, <gasps> Heather's husband is also her contractor, right? Give everybody a moment just to go like, oh man, she's so lucky. I wish I had that. <laughs> yes, but you know, like the 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 the, the uh, what is it called? The the shoemakers. Children have no shoes. Right. I'm like, hey, the, the, my window coverings aren't. Um, I don't like how they look. Or hey, I'm missing paint right there. So I yeah, I could totally see how that would be a problem. It's so funny. Um, Janine Lonbeck is our uh, leadership director at Business of Design, and her boyfriend is, builds. Uh, luxury custom homes and they are buying a piece of property together and he's going to put a home on the property for her. And she's like, I'm never going to get my home. Am I? I have got the land, but I'm never going to get my house. So she's buying a second property with just a house. So she doesn't have to stress <laughs> out while he's thinking about building the house. That is so funny. That's awesome to be able to do that anyway. But yes, that is hilarious. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, one day I will be there. Exa- oh, uh, yes, you will. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. If you're a member, if you're a Business of Design member, head over to MoBOD and listen to Heather talk about how she slays it asking for a flat fee, how she went from asking for so little money to asking for big dollars and really just primed yourself for the next job to ask for even more if it's warranted. Yes, definitely if it's warranted, you know. Um, oh, you know what she asked me? She did ask. What? Well, how did you come up to $20,000? I said, well, in my experience. Oh, you know, yes. <laughs> I promise you. I say in my experience, probably every time I'm on the phone with a potential client or and or um, an established client. Over and over again, I use the same phrasing all the time. That's hilarious. In my experience, in other words, you don't have experience, but I do, lady, and that's what we're going to do. I'm just so excited for you. But before we even jump into this topic, I have to know, how does somebody who is a dancer really on track to be a professional dancer end up in construction? Oh, my goodness. Right. So... I started dancing at three. I went to Elliot Fell Ballet Dance Theater of Harlem, probably every place you can think of. Um, and I loved it. But then after being at the, you know, famous performing arts high school in, in Manhattan, um, 15, you know what? I actually got into a bad argument with my, my, with my mother and she said, you're going to your father's. So I was shipped to California to Marina Del Rey. Oh my God, that's so traumatic. And of course, this is the moment where the audio really takes a dive. So basically, she says her mom, who she loves, is a total tyrant. And she shipped her out to Marina Del Rey, where there's no performing arts school. There's no dance theater. You could go to L.A. proper, but Marina Del Rey is pretty far from that. Gorgeous. But just what a shock moving from New York City. And somehow the school year gets messed up and she misses an opportunity to audition for something she wants to audition Four and then back to Heather. Fast forward, I used to watch Bob Vila. <laughs> of course, this old house, right? I would take um, screwdrivers, then I would take the the door the the doorknobs off the doors. I would try to rearrange stuff. My father, so my parents were divorced. My, I would go to. Um, uh, garage sales and like buy things and try to like decorate my father's house, not realizing that maybe ultimately one day this is what I would want to do. And then fast forward to 2015 when I met my husband, he's my second husband and, um, and he, he builds, I was like, this is awesome. I didn't think anything of it. And he was working for a company and then it just wasn't working out with that company. I said, come on, let's start your own. I mean, you're, you're phenomenal. Let's do this. So I went on to the IRS, got my, you know, the, my tax ID number, went, got my por- corporate docs. And I said, let's call it token construction and design because let's design these spaces that we're building. And that's what we did. And then I didn't even really call myself a designer at all for probably the first three and a half to four years. I just thought I was a construction company owner. That's it. I don't know what your first husband was like, but you definitely traded up. Like, honestly. Ah, you know what? And then, you know what the funny thing is? He kind of is in construction too, but um, he was a police officer. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait a minute. So you have this background in dance, which is highly disciplined. Highly yeah. disciplined. Seven days a week. You had a mom who ran your home like a boot camp, sounds like. <laughs> you had. Tyrant. Tough love. Sounds like you, you know, sounds like you were kind of raised in the Marines. And then you also have that gift of being able to pull things apart and put them back together. Okay, I'm done. There's nobody is more well primed to be successful as an interior design professional, interior design build than you. That's like the best background I've ever heard. Really? Yes. Discipline. I think... 95% of our problems, well, okay, I'm going to say 80% of our problems come down to unwillingness to be disciplined when it really matters. Uh, Another 5% come down to just plain old fear and self-esteem issues, maybe even 10%, right? Okay, right. And then 
I don't know. We have everything else we need. Like I've never had a single person call me and say, I'm not sure which color to put on the sofa. I'm not sure which leg shape to pick for the dining room. I'm not sure which chandelier to pick. It's always about, I'm afraid to ask for the money I need to run my business and make a go of this. Yes. Um, you actually, you know, there's a lot of fear. So I'm doing uh, the project with Jerrica. She flew down to, to, uh, to Florida and we had trade day and watching her in person in action, um, as a designer, as the project manager, um, I just later that evening, I called her and I said, I have this amazing, um, a newfound respect for you. Wow. I'm terrified for this project because it is big. It's, there's a lot going on. Um, she's absolutely amazing. She is. I, and I just, she's phenomenal. That just gives me the chills. I think there's an opportunity for each one of us to grab a mentor. And you and Jerrica are going to be on the show together. So we'll go down that path. Jerrica, by the way, is an amazing business of design member. And one of the incredible perks, you know, unforeseen gifts of this community is the connections that are made for people to work together. But I can tell, <clears throat> can you talk a little bit about how discipline has been important in your success? You know, I never even really thought, you know, Heather, you know, your discipline. I just, I'm the type of person, um, it's that type A personality. I'm the high C in a disc assessment. Um, I get tunnel vision. So when I want something, it's like, don't do anything half-assed. My mother would say, if you're going to rob a bank, you better get away with it forever. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom's so, kind of awesome. <laughs> she really is. She's a tyrant, but she is awesome. Um, and, you know, I guess it taught me a lot of things. Um, I have an older brother. Um, his name is Dennis. He is a writer, director. He's, he's, he's my muse. He's my hero. He's, my brother's my everything. And I see his discipline, I guess. I just want to be just like him. So I don't know, maybe I never really thought of it. I just knew I always wanted to be like my brother. I would read books just because he read that book and I wanted to have a conversation. My favorite book of all time is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. That's a great book. It is. I know the majority of the words uh, verbatim in that book. You do um, not. The aim of life is self-development. To realize one nature's perfectly, that is what each of us is here for. And yet, and that, 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 and goes into another whole nother paragraph. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> a little bit of a... ability to be hyper-focused, how does that show up at work? How does it show up with clients in terms of running your projects? Um, I am over communicative. I think I call my clients for everything just to keep them updated. I act as though as I'm the client and it's really important to me because I know it's, well, if I were the client, they didn't call me. I know how I would feel. So a lot of the time I'm uh, angry with my husband. You got there late. I don't understand. Would you want somebody coming late to your house? And so I think that me always putting myself in the client's shoes or just knowing how I want things done, I think that helps me, I guess, run it a little bit better. Um, you know, I do everything. I do the administrative side. I'm not there yet where I can have all these, you know, people in my corner and helping me. So it's all the hats I'm wearing. And then, you know, the most important thing to do is I make a to-do list every single day. Oh, I've got a great suggestion for you right after this. Hey there, it won't surprise business of design members or longtime listeners to know that we are always looking for suppliers who make our work easier, right? So I'd like to introduce you to business of design podcast sponsor, Daniel House Club. Daniel House Club simplifies the business of design. They do that by allowing us to source from over 80 trade vendors while taking advantage of deep discounts and no minimum orders. You can also use your Daniel House Club dashboard to share pieces with clients. And this is amazing. Freight is always 10% and white glove delivery quotes are available nationwide. 
Customer service is really important to Daniel House Club. They have a concierge who will pick up the phone and answer your questions, help you search for products, help you organize returns, or affect replacements or repair when necessary. Now, how do they know what we need? Well, Daniel House Club started as a design business, so founders Peter and Alexander Spalding have done the hard work of servicing clients, and they really want to help us succeed. BOD listeners, this is where you come in. When you go to danielhouse.club during the month of February, you can receive an additional 50% off your Pro or Pro Plus membership using the discount code BODPRO. You can also try them out for free. Get in on the action. And thanks for sponsoring Business of Design. You know, somebody once, somebody who worked for me once used to make her to-do list every day on her log sheets so that at the end of the day, she could go back and easily remember all the 159 tasks she did and she would put time to it. Oh. Right? Mine is just in a notebook. I like that. Isn't that a genius? Lot. And then she that just... It, you know what? I might change Because mine. I had a few days where I was so overwhelmed and I was switching jobs all day long, back and forth, back and forth. And at the end, I'm like, I didn't log any hours. And I had a rough three days of trying to stay on top of a million things. I thought, what a pity I didn't practice what I preach. So I'm back. I had to slap myself and get back on track. And I did the best I could, tried to figure out. But I know I missed, I had to miss four hours of work that I should have accounted for. You know, this, I've started doing that. And I have a client that um, we're doing, um, it's a galley kitchen. And it's not a a really big job. It's not uh, very profitable. However, my home growing up, we had a galley kitchen. I love galley kitchens for whatever weird reason. So no matter what I said, even if I, the the profit is small, I want to do this kitchen. I just want it. Yeah. And, um, so of course, you know, there were, there really weren't any project management. It was, it's different as a design and build, at least it was not anymore. I've, I'm learning this flat fee game, right? Yeah. You're winning. The <laughs> and, flat fee um, game. I'm so happy. And I started doing, you know, logging uh, my time with her and I explained to her, listen, I'm going to send it to you also because I, I feel like that sometimes they don't realize how much we do. And when I started logging it, I was like, holy crap, I spent a lot of time talking to my clients and not in a bad way, but okay. Um, but then I realized that, that is difficult to stop and take a little note or, or write something down to make sure that I have accounted for that time, whether it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So that's something I have to work on. All right. Well, you've got the discipline to do it. And I know what you mean, but you know, if I'm in the car, I'll write it on a napkin. I I will send myself a text. I'll send myself an email as soon as I hang up, just like, Oh, talked about the leak in the roof, you know, 15 minutes go. It's just, it's a discipline. It's a discipline is all it is. And, um, being a tag team duo of, a, of the interior design professional and then the contractor as well, or the building professional in your case, and interior design, and the contractor. Oh, you guys are unstoppable. Unstoppable. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah. You I are. Guess, I mean, I guess so. Um, we're, we're, we're headed down the right path. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know. We're all so excited for you. Heather, one time we spoke, you mentioned something about a sales technique or a method of communication you like to use. What What is that? Oh, it's called READ. R-E-A-D. What's first? The first thing is relating to the client, right? So always when I speak to the client, I'll hear one thing or I'll hear the dog in the background or I can hear the New York accent. And I know mine is really heavy, although I try to hide it sometimes initially in the beginning. I feel like us New Yorkers are so abrasive. <laughs> Even when I we're trying to be like teddy bears, we're like, Rrr. you know. No, I love New Yorkers. But you, I could see why you'd sort of minimize it living in Florida because you just don't want people to make a judgment. You know, that, yeah, that's, a, that's a little bit. Um, about it. Yes. Because they don't have those accents and they sound nice and fuzzy and warm and rainbows and unicorns. And I sound 
sirens and fire trucks and yellow <laughs> taxi cabs. No, 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 no. You sound like possibility and energy and artistic endeavors and achievements. Oh my gosh. You no. New York is, um, I love New York. I always wanted to live in New York. New York is amazing, but it's just, it's, it's a so lot. Busy. It's a hustle. Yeah, it's a lot. You yeah. know, it's a lot. I moved here when I was what, 22, 23. Wow. My ex husband got into a car accident. He got 10 grand. You know, he received 10 grand. I was like, let's move. <laughs> and then wanna... my tunnel vision came into place. 28 days later, I had an apartment and a job. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> so wait a minute. So, so relate. So the minute you start talking to him, you're looking for like, what is that way that, what do we have in common? How can I capitalize on that? Not in a bad way, but just how can I make a connection with this human being? Yes. Okay. And, and then that it, it, I find that to be a little bit easy mm. and I'm not really sure why, I guess, because if I can talk all day for free or if I can talk all day and get paid for it, I'm having fun. <laughs> too. I know what you mean. <laughs> I told the, the client yesterday, I was like, you know what? We're building this house. Can I move in? I said, I have five children though, but can I move in this? I I'm me. I'm never, I'm never different. Right. It's that's, um, that's a gift for sure. So once you, once you figure out how to relate to them, read, so E is next. What? This is good. I'm really on fire this morning. I can spell the word read. <laughs> R E. Oh, Kimberly, you're doing great. <laughs> Heather knows it's like seven in the morning, and I like rolled out of bed, and my hair is like a mess. Okay, R E. What is E stand you know for? That you know that you just made me really nervous, and I actually forgot what the rest of the acronym is. Oh, oh you, my I can tell you what it is. Establish a need. Oh, that's right. Establishing. So you <laughs> say it. You say it. Oh, wait. So it's, um, it's, uh, what is it? Relate, establish a need. A is, wait, don't tell me. Holy sh- You make me nervous. Isn't that hilarious? Oh, advanced tailored solution. And then develop and a commitment. Sl- but- <laughs> so <laughs> E is, um, establish a, rela- establish, um, <laughs> a need. A rela- my craziness is worn up on Heather. I know. Finally, establish a need. So, what is it that they need? And sometimes they really don't even know what they need. Right. Because they'll say, so, I, "I need someone to design my whole house top to bottom." Like, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe yeah. that's what you need. I don't know yet. We haven't no, been to the consultation. You need a new kitchen. You need a new bathroom. And sometimes, like you said, they don't know their budget. So sometimes they don't necessarily know what they need as well. Yeah. You know, the, the, the house that we went to, um, for the consultation last week, the 20,000, um, she wanted a coastal design. So when we went in there and you and I discussed, no, she doesn't, she doesn't know what she wants. Yeah. They say these things like, Oh, I want Hollywood Regency or I want coastal design or I want this. Okay, great. That's what you want. Let's, let's, let me review things. And as the expert make an offering to you, um, that will solve your needs. Yes. And then, you know what? I established her need, um, you know, off the top of my head, I can't really remember what I said, although we're not going with the necessarily the coastal design anymore because I established the need that she needed for that space for her rambunctious children and stains and running around and traffic. Yeah. So you just have to check in whatever they tell you you need. It's good information, but it's not necessarily the final word on what's going to happen, right? Because I've got in homes and they say they need a new kitchen, but you walk in and the place is a disaster. There's, they're like hoarding. Every room is gross. You don't yes. need a kitchen, babe. You need somebody to come over and hold your hand and help you get rid of stuff. That's what you need. And it's hard to tell them that, but you know, it can, it can turn out to be a healthy relationship when I'm honest with them and tell them what they really need. You know, so I, I think, and sometimes I I think I'm a little bit over honest. However, I make sure I say it in a way that it's not offensive. Yeah. You know, um, if you want my professional opinion and I'll say it with a a smile or chuckle. And then a lot of the time they'll go with what I say. Um, matter of fact, my husband is, is he's awesome with he as an artist, because he's an artist naturally, he sees things so differently. I call it, he's the master of reconfiguration. Wow. That's what I say. So and, um, he can take any space and just, my husband is, he's a dream. <laughs> no, 
I wouldn't mind beating him up every so often, but he's a dream. Either way. Just to keep him in line. Yeah, of course. This sounds terrible. If two men were having this conversation, that would absolutely not fly. So we're just no big. We're joking. We're joking. Everybody, we're joking. It was a joke. Not definitely not hitting him. Not going to beat him up. No, definitely not. Nope. <laughs> a little okay. mental torture once in a while doesn't hurt. Just joking. Not joking, but you know what I mean. <laughs> what is it? The sorry, I'm not sorry. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so E yeah. is establish a need and then A. A, um, advanced tailored solution. So it's oh. make sure that everything is, is tailored to them, to that project, to, you know, you know, there's things that I do that is, um, I do for every project. We make sure our clients don't have to do anything but give us access and pay us. We take care of everything from permits to any type of applications, um, engineers, architects, stamps and seals when the permit, uh, when the building department needs it. We do everything. As a matter of fact, we'll... Um, These we'll are standards. Help. And it's, you know, it's just something that I think is, you're living in construction, I don't think you should have to do anything. Right. But because who wants to live in construction? I don't want to live with my house like messy and my daughter, toddler throwing things everywhere. That would drive me crazy. Right. So I can only imagine. I just don't feel that they need to do anything. So I make sure that we take everything off their hands as much as possible. So and they love the fact that they don't have to do anything. I you know that you just this reminds me of something I'm working on right now for the elite retreat that's coming up about standards. I've totally forgot about that. A standard is that we pull all the permits all the time. So all of those things that you come across, Heather, with your husband in your world, if you can begin to write them down and develop a book of standards, it's so easy to sell your services. Because when a client says, what do you do? You, you open up the book and you just read. Here's the 439,000 things we do as a regular part of deliverables for you, our clients. So I love that. And then, so A was advance a tailored solution. solution. I like that. I like that language, a tailored solution. You think you want coastal, but it's really what I'd like to give you is this other thing that's kind of a riff on it that's special and just for you. Yes. Uh, You know, and it could be things, um, just custom, um, custom builds. If, you know, it can be a custom table. It can be, you know, but it's really specific to your needs. You're my client. Every It's specific. Obviously, there are going to be things that, that are going to be in this design and another client's that are going to be similar, you know, because it's furnishings, it's, yeah. it's oh, building. Yeah. But the entire project really is, it's about that person. It's bringing their personality into the design. Um, it's it's everything is about them. You know, we want everything to be about us, right? I know I do. I'm, exactly. I'm okay. I'm selfish. I know that. But in this case, as a designer, I want to make sure that it's all about my client. Yeah. So, and then if, you know, you have a bathroom where sometimes the water is always hot or it never gets cold. So of course that's the, the builder, you know, will go in there and the plumber will go ahead and fix it. But I'll make sure that whatever is, wrong with their space, whether it be, um, things are damaged or a home that's not nicely furnished or put together. We make sure that we find a solution, which would be the advanced tailored solution to fix or remediate that issue, that problem, or the need that they want or that they didn't realize they had, they need it. I like that. Okay. And you you can't leave us in suspense. What is D? Oh, it's to, uh, D is develop a commitment. Okay. And what does that mean? That what you're going, that what you say that you're going to do, you complete it. You do it. My client yesterday is perfect example. My client yesterday called me and she, she wanted um, a farm sink and some of the farm sink uh, with the, uh, the aprons had, you know, um, some decorative front. She wanted it to be just completely flat. So it arrives at her house yesterday and she opens it. She said, oh, it came in one piece. But Heather, don't forget. Remember, I wanted it a smooth, um, a smooth face. I said, it turns around. I said, because I like the other side. I know that you like the flat side. But you know what? Once the kitchen is put together, you might like the side that's not smooth. 
Oh, so and the, then, the sink has both sides. Yes. And it's reversible, which is, oh, that's I haven't seen genius. That. I haven't seen that. Yes. I'll, I'll send you an email with it. And she's like, you just keep delivering and delivering and delivering. I said, that is my job. Yeah. I try because again, I act as the client all the time, every, every project. Yeah. We have to have empathy, uh, right? And we've all done our own renovations or in your case, no renovation because your husband's busy doing clients, not your house. But when I do my own renovation, I always think like, wow, no wonder clients get so stressed out. It's expensive. It's exhausting. It's messy. It's noisy. It's complicated. Exactly. So, and you just have to make sure you commit yourself to your client and make sure that you deliver everything sometime, you know, fingers crossed on time within the budget, yeah. which we all know doesn't always happen. It does. Probably a lot. It does. It does. It does. It always happens. A hundred percent of the time. Wait, hold on. Uh-huh. I'm missing something. I know we have some work to do. Yeah. Yes, we do have some yes, work. Yes. I mean, I get to see your face more. That, I know. It's because this, I'm, I'm backlit. So I look like I'm in witness protection here, but I'm really here. Uh, we, we have so much more to talk about. We have so much more to talk about. You know, we're doing, um, we have, you jogged a couple of memories. We're doing a webinar upcoming. If you're not yet a member, these are open to you as well because they are, they're, uh, a paid situation, but we're doing a webinar on flat fees, how to run a flat fee project from top to bottom. And then we're doing a webinar on commercial projects, how to run commercial projects with the 15 steps. So that's coming up, but just within membership, start at the very beginning, there is a way to guarantee on time and on budget and really deliver. And there are going to be a few, um, there's always a few gaps, um, but you can still be on time and on budget. Right. You know, the unanticipated things behind the wall that we can't see. Of course. Yes. Yes. But, um, no, but we, so we haven't given them a timeline at that point. We can't give you a timeline until we know what we're up against. Oh, I see a man behind you. It's either your husband is. That's the husband. Would you like to meet him? Yes. Yes. Come. (laughs) <laughs> I think he's painting some, he's, uh, I think he's refacing some cabinets right now. Outside. Oh my gosh. Hey, this hi. We've, we've this heard is, so many great things about you. Kimberly Selden. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. I, hear, I hear about you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the groupie. We hear nothing but good things about you. So excited for you too. She's, oh, she can't hear you. Nice to meet you. Uh, oh, I forgot. I had, had, oh, uh, uh, that's right. She didn't, he didn't hear anything <laughs> you said. Yeah. She said that. We've heard so much, you know, so many good things about you. Oh, good things are good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Oh, you two lovers. He's, he's very, he's shy. That was awesome. And he's doing work around your house. So it's like a win. It's a big day. But it, no, it's um, not a win-win. He's not doing work for my house. Oh, I thought he was. No, this is, these cabinets are for a client uh, and it's okay. been raining and raining. The weather hasn't been really nice in Florida, so he hasn't been able to spray. Uh-huh. And then the spray booth, there was an issue with the spray booth. So, you know, when it rains, it pours. When it so rains, it said, pours. So he said, okay, you know what? On our balcony, I'm going to spray them on our balcony. I'll make a, he made a makeshift uh, spray booth with That's hurricane nice. shutters. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. All right, you know we like to end every episode with design intervention. Any great advice for people? Don't be apologetic with your price. Your price is your price is your price is your price. I I no longer am apologetic, ever. That means you're not my ideal client. This is amazing. Will you come back on the show again in six months and tell us how much you asked for at the next job and the next job and the next job? Um, you could, I will be on here every day if you want me to. <laughs> I do. She's fun to hang around with. All right, Cheryl, Hello. we have to have an event in Florida so we can go hang around with Heather. Thank you yes. so much. Right? Yeah. Yes. It's time. Don't, you don't have to tell me twice. It's time. It's time. Oh, uh, we'll have a great, what is it? Like Thursday or Friday? It's Friday. No, it's- Yes, it's Friday. Oh, Hallelujah. Days, Have, no, I need two more days. I know. I know. It's it's busy. There's a lot, but aren't we lucky? Like, aren't we yes. lucky? Yeah, yeah. We are. Uh, so good it talking was, to you, sweetheart. It was so good talking to you. Um, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being part of the Business of Design community and supporting BOD's mission to improve the industry one design business at a time. 
it's time for you to take the next step and join Business of Design. Like thousands of design professionals in 50 countries around the world, you'll find the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to dramatically improve your business and transform your life. What are you waiting for? Start today. Start today.